The Indian government has recently ordered that VPN companies will have to start collecting and handing over user data at their request. They are wanting to force the VPN companies to collect and store usage data, such as the sites that you visit, the names of their customers, their physical addresses, as well as their IP addresses, and they should store this for up to five years under the directive of the country's computer emergency response team. And as we can see from section seven of this document that is outlining the new law, any service provider, intermediaries, data centers, body corporate, or person who fails to provide the information called for or comply with the direction under subsection six shall be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to one year or with fine which may extend to one lakh rupees or with both. I know I'm probably pronouncing that word wrong, but one lakh rupees is 100,000 rupees or about 1,300 US dollars. So this is something that these companies are absolutely going to comply with. Nobody is going to spend a year in jail or even pay 1300 to cover for you. And I doubt that VPN companies that have their servers in India are going to start pulling their servers out of India as a way of having to duck this to compliance because India is one of the technology hubs of the East. There's lots of money to be made there. It's a growing economy. And when you stop to consider the fact that so many VPN companies are already using deceptive advertising techniques and lying to their customers, they pay influencers on YouTube to lie and say that VPNs will make you anonymous or that they're absolutely necessary to use when you're on public Wi-Fi to keep from being hacked. All of that just further confirms my suspicion that these companies are going to comply and start collecting data if they haven't already, because we also have to keep in mind that a lot of VPNs have been bought out by a former ad company. And I won't say that this is happening for sure, so there's no need to go and have Snopes try to debunk this statement, but my suspicion is that some of these companies have already been collecting and selling user data to further increase their revenue. So going forward, starting in late June, if you connect to a VPN server in India or any other kind of computer service that is hosted on a VPS, you are being watched. So now, Let's discuss some ways for us to deal with this development because I don't just want to black pill you and make you worried. I want to give you some ways that you can deal with it. And I think that the approach is going to be slightly different depending on whether you're somebody who's in India using these services in India or if you're somebody who's outside of India using these services. So for people outside of India, we can just avoid those VPN servers, and instead you can use ones that are based in countries that don't force data collection, because chances are that's the reason you're using a VPN in the first place. You probably got shilled it by some YouTuber who told you that they're a super anonymous VPN, even though that's not true. But if enough people do this, if enough people boycott these Indian VPNs, then it could actually create market pressure and make the VPN companies withdraw from India because they're spending money to be there. They're renting space in data centers. And what they ultimately care about is making more money. So if they're paying to rent those data centers or paying to rent those VPSs and nobody's actually signing up and using them, then they'll probably pull out. Now, for the people that are actually living in India that are using these services, well, I honestly don't know how much impact it's seriously going to have on all of you. On one hand, it really does suck that your government is ramping up surveillance on its own citizens, but everyone that I know who actually understands how VPNs work, they pretty much just use them for downloading torrents, for masking what their IP address is so that they don't get DMCA letters mailed to them by their ISP. Here in the US, Downloading torrents is very illegal because when you pirate content, Hollywood elites make less money, which means that they have less money to create media that erodes our culture and less money to buy private islands where they get together with their friends and abuse children, which makes the politicians sad because, well, most of the time, they're the friends that are getting invited to the private island. 
But as far as I know, online piracy is de facto legal in India, at least downloading content for private use appears to be. And I'm not a lawyer, so don't try to take this as legal advice. But if you're living in India, you might want to just really think about what you're using a VPN for, because from what I can tell, it doesn't seem like it's absolutely necessary to use one when downloading pirated content like it is here in the United States. If you fell for the propaganda of VPN ads and you use it constantly because you think it's going to make you more secure, then you might want to educate yourself a bit more on VPNs. Now, maybe you're using VPNs as an Indian citizen in India to discuss the government. I know that a lot of people in India are dissatisfied with their government and can actually face persecution for speaking about them online. It doesn't seem like it's quite as bad as it is in China, but any level of persecution for speaking out against the government is obviously something you would want to avoid. But VPNs are not really meant for that either. Political dissent when there's fear of repercussions from the government is best done on something that can actually make you more anonymous, like Tor. Maybe people in India are using VPNs to access porn sites because pornography is banned in India, or at least pornography sites are banned. And while I do believe in freedom of information, there's way better things that you could be doing with your life than watching porn. It is a waste of time and it is self-destructive. And speaking of blocking different kinds of sites, over here in Freedom Land, a court recently started ordering ISPs to block illegal streaming sites. Now, this is being handed down after companies that were affiliated with Moshi Ettery, who is a producer and cinema investor, sued various piracy sites like Israel.tv and Estorot.tv, which is Israel's most popular pirate streaming site, at least since 2021, apparently getting millions of visitors every month. The owners of these sites, they never showed up to court and they were each ordered to pay $7.6 million to the plaintiffs, which is pretty standard procedure. I mean, usually people in charge of illegal streaming sites don't show up to court. And if you don't show up to court, usually the plaintiffs end up automatically winning that case. But then the judge also said, that all ISPs and any other ISPs providing services in the United States shall block access to that website at any domain addresses known today or to be used in the future by the defendants by any technological means available on the ISPs systems. And the ISPs have up to 30 days to comply with this demand. And after they comply, they're going to have to start redirecting users to a web page that looks like this. So you try going to Israel.tv or any other one, and you end up on this site. And from what I can tell, this really only seems to apply to the Israeli pirate sites that I mentioned earlier. I mean, you can see here that it's written in both English and Hebrew, so it doesn't seem like this is something that's going to apply to every single piracy site, but this does set a new precedence and illegal streaming sites and torrenting sites, they get sued all the time. So I wouldn't be surprised if the next time one does get sued that they're going to have this applied. Uh, the Pirate Bay, for example, they're probably coming up on their annual lawsuit pretty soon. So we'll see what happens with that. But the great thing about this is that it is very, very trivial to bypass. All you have to do is switch to a DNS provider other than the one that's provided by your ISP. Very easy and free to do. And now your ISP has no power to censor what domains you visit. Also, this isn't something that can really even be enforced to begin with because illegal streaming and pirate sites they change their domain names all the time. There's nothing stopping them from changing the name or just changing the top level domain and then announcing to their users that, hey, we're back up on a new site, here's the link. And then people can visit it using the ISP's DNS servers because they aren't aware of the new address yet. And it's probably going to take them a while to become aware of it and then to update their blacklist. So if you find that your Israeli pirate ship is no longer able to drop off its cargo, 
Simply change your DNS in your network settings, wait a few minutes for it to update, and then check the pirate ship again later. You'll probably find that it is docked where it always was, ready to unload whatever media treasures you want. These two stories, they should make it very clear, if it isn't already, that understanding the basics of the internet and computer networks is necessary to have freedom in today's world, since governments and private corporations from all over are trying to constantly erode our online freedoms. Like and comment to hack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey. Have a great rest of your day.